Welcome to my quick tutorial on how to make Google Sheets do something that Excel does a lot easier. What we need to do is come up with a way to put multiple X axes on one graph. And the problem we run into is if we have 0, 9, 10, 11, 0, 12, 14, 16, the spreadsheet can't account for that when it makes the graph. It wants all of the X values to be the same. So we have to hack it a bit. And if you look at this set of data, I'm a little suspicious that they all end up the same, but whatever. Um, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to color code some stuff. You don't have to do it. It's just something I'm going to do that I decided was helpful. I'm going to color code each data set. I don't have to color code the titles. And it doesn't really matter what colors you pick, so don't spend a lot of time on that. And I picked one of these that has not a ton of data points. And now I'm just going to copy and paste these here. And I'm just using Control C and Control V to speed that process up. You can right click or whatever. The color coding for me helps because then I can remember which one I pasted already. So we're putting these in a row so that the spreadsheet thinks that all those X values are, well, it makes all those X values one set of X values. And then we just have to have the appropriate series Y values. Um, so I'm going to need to insert some rows here uh, because I need this data to be spread out. <clears throat> so I'm going to add one, two, three, four, maybe like five columns. So insert column. Already screwed that up. Insert two columns. Insert a column, whatever. All right. And now I'm going to go down and I'm going to move some stuff over. What we're doing is we're setting this up so that it sees the data as a different series, a different y-axis set of data. And I can't just copy it because otherwise when I'm selecting data all the way down, it'll select this other data. And you'll see how that works in a minute. But what I'm doing is I'm putting them in separate columns, just one column over and one column over. So that's why I made that extra room. You don't have to, uh, although it becomes a mess like uh, in my spreadsheet over here, wherever it went, which, this all overlapped and I had to delete a bunch of stuff. So let's go back to acid C here. All right, now we've got our data organized and our X axis. Uh, I'm gonna highlight the title, thanks to Charity for explaining that to me last fall. So I've got all that stuff and then I'm gonna insert our chart. And I want my chart to be a scatter chart. And if you look at that, it uh, isn't so great. In fact, let me move it. I just cut and pasted it somewhere that was more convenient. So double click on your chart at some point in time and you can change the things here. We wanna to go to setup. We're gonna change what our X axis is. Um, and I want it to go from, in this case, A10 down to A124. So got it. I just did control or shift click to get all that highlighted. Now, our graph is showing the X and Y axis as the same information. It's kind of a default setup here, um, but I wanna change that. And what I'm gonna do to save myself a little time is I'm gonna take that information that we had for our X axis and I'm just gonna copy it. And then when I go down here, I can just paste because things get rather tedious. So instead of A10 to A24, now I want B10 to B24. And I want another series that's gonna be C10 to C24, sorry, 124, you get the point. Now, I'm gonna mention something in a minute, it's my own negligence, but we'll see if I can fix it easily. So if I copy this over, I'm kinda interested to see if this will work. I'm trying to label our headings so that when we have a legend in the graph, it'll be somewhat intuitive. You can do this however you want. I'm a little neurotic about spacing and everything else. So you can set your column spacing. I just highlighted those columns and uh, resize columns B through F. It doesn't matter, 100 or something's fine. And there we go. So now they're all uniform, not that it matters. So we're starting to see our data on there. And in fact, this looks exactly like a titration curve. So that's good news. And in a separate video, I'll talk about how that data is supposed to look. This is just uh, us practicing cheating with the spreadsheet. Go back to setup there. Keep forgetting these tabs. 
paste it. I already did A, B, C, I guess this is D, uh, B, C, D, E. All right, I already screwed that up. I just want to copy that, make a new one. Now it's going to be E. I've got one more to go. E is F. So what you're seeing appearing on our graph, like this is pretty cool in this particular case because they all line up pretty well. Um, I'm looking if this is the same group every time. It's because the same group was pretty consistent. Anyway, in this particular case, these x-axis values ended up about the same. We've got this and we can do some changing to it. Scatter plot is the way to go. You may notice our y-axis is wrong. So you can go to um, chart and axis titles and um, I want to go to the vertical axis title, and that's supposed to be pH. And then I want to go to my horizontal axis title, and that might be something like volume of, we used 0 0.05 molar sodium hydroxide added. I copied that because I'm a cheater. If we go to the chart title, I can just do pH versus, and I already copied it. Volume of pH, make sure you put a unit on there. Got it. And then chart subtitle would be good if we knew which acid it was. So this is unknown acid C. And so now we've got a lot of information here. Again, I get lost in the details about the minutia of formatting, like, oh, I want that centered, but maybe that's good there. And there's my legend there. And you can change its location. If you go to um, where to go, yeah, position, and you can go to the right side, or you can go inside, which is super weird. I think the top looks pretty good for these because we've got so many. It would be nice if you did like A three, group three, trial one, trial two, so you could get these column headings. So this is what comes up as your series name when you're looking at your top graph, and. Uh, We've got most of the stuff we need. So the short of it is color code your pairs, then copy and paste them over here into one long column. So it reads that as all of your x-axis values, then split them up into different columns and then graph those as different series and then play around with your formatting. In Excel, you can just like highlight, highlight, insert a line, highlight, highlight, insert a line. So this is kind of a hack to make that work in sheets.